following presentation will cover acute pulmonary nephritis and chronic pulmonary nephritis as well as nephrotic syndrome. Acute pulmonary nephritis comes from a, it's an immunological process that affects both basic functional units of both kidneys and their scarring of the basement membrane and allows passage of proteins and blood cells into the urine. <clears throat> so this happens usually post strep infection. You have an antigen antibody reaction which generates a lock and key complex and then the lock and key complex is uh, attempted to be uh, eliminated through your kidneys and it causes glomerular damage. The glomerular damage causes capillary damage causing holes which allows albumin and blood to escape through the kidney. Additionally, the glomerular damage can cause increased vasodepressor activity causing a vasospasm, which in turn causes hypertension. Additionally, the vasospasm can cause a decrease in your VFR, which will increase your aldosterone and sodium retention, causing water retention, leading to edema. So the major signs of acute glomerular nephritis are hypertension, edema, albuminemia, and hematuria. Clonal manifestations. Here's the mataturia. The dark, it presents as dark cola colored urine, edema, hypertension, and then the term azotemia or uremia will also be used in the setting of high BUNs. Severe AGN is ca uh, characterized by flank or abdominal pain, fever, and malaise. And the fever comes from the idea that this is a strep infection. So diagnostics, we're looking at a CBC, we're looking for a um, increased white count, BUN and creatinine, we're looking to be increased urinalysis, we're looking for the presence of blood and protein, ultrasound and CT scan will show enlarged kidneys. We're also looking at an anti-streptoliasin O titer, which is positive in patients that have AGN. Pharmacology. We're going to do corticoid steroids such as prednisone or solumedrol. The reason we do that is because we want to decrease the immune system response so it quits making the lock and key complexes. We also want to use something to bring down blood pressures. We're going to use calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers help increase the glomerular filtration rate and ACE inhibitors. If you remember from our primary discussion about the elimination concept GU, we talked about the use of ACE inhibitors and how they can be nephrotoxic. So long-term use of large doses of ACE inhibitors can be nephrotoxic. Those milligrams, that dosage is normally 10, 20, 30, and 40 milligrams. Doses less than 10 milligrams are used for renal encouragement. It may be used in this setting to bring down the blood pressure and encourage renal activity. Finally, we want to use an antibiotic to kill the strep infection, and penicillin is the drug of choice. Diet. We're going to increase the patient's carbohydrates and decrease their protein. Protein is very difficult for the kidneys to process, especially proteins, protein that is flesh or muscle, such as red meat, chicken, or fish. We also want to decrease the sodium intake as well as potentially decrease their fluid intake. The only thing we want to increase here is the carbs for patient energy. We're going to monitor the fluid status with eyes and nose and daily weights. Potential complications of AGN, hepatic encephalopathy due to long-term uh, hypertension, so we want to reduce the blood pressure. Unfortunately, heart failure is a, is a common complication due to the overload uh, or the overwork of the heart due to the additional fluid volume, and it is not reversible. Uh, pulmonary edema due to fluid buildup, osmosis issues, and patients can take Lasix for that. Can also cause end-stage renal disease, prolonged acute glomerular nephritis, <clears throat> which is not treated or not effectively treated can lead to end-stage renal disease. These patients will have high-dose corticoid steroids. They may also have plasmapheresis. Uh, the plasma is where often we can uh, 
clear or clean the lock-in key complexes out. Uh, maybe cytotoxic agents or hemodialysis. Emotional support and home care um, medications, uh, medications such as calcium channel blockers or ACE inhibitors, uh, antibiotics, corticoid steroids are going to have to be taken at home. These patients usually are only hospitalized for two to three days and then released home. Uh, they may have to continue with their dietary restrictions, so teaching low sodium, low protein, um, increased carbohydrates, etc. They also need follow-up care. Patients that have acute glomerular nephritis need to follow up with a nephrologist um, frequently, and they also may need home care to review the effectiveness of their medications, look at daily weight logs, um, and assess for compliance with meds and diet. Then we have chronic glomerular nephritis. Chronic glomerular nephritis, or CGN, comes from repeated or untreated episodes of acute glomerular nephritis. Increased lipids, <coughs> lupus from that lock and key complex, um, excessive amounts of lock and key complexes because the complements do not work and the complements do not work well to help to help uh, get rid of byproducts of inflammation. Uh, diabetic glomerular sclerosis as well is a cause of chronic glomerular nephritis. So kidneys are reduced in size, there's scarring of the tubules and thickening of the arteries. Um, the thickening of the arteries and the scarring of the tubules can also accelerate renal thrombosis, renal artery thrombosis. So clinical manifestations. Um, they'll present with hypertension. If you have a patient that has acute, or chron oh, excuse me, if your patient has chronic glenonephritis and they present with hypotension, that's showing that they've changed disease state, that they're in a diff, they're ha they have nephrotic syndrome. And we'll discuss nephrotic syndrome thoroughly near the end of the lecture. But just circle, highlight, star that, that if they have hypotension, that's, that's a complication. Um, that's not um, a normal finding. They may increase BU and creatinine. They may have some weight loss because they're um, continuing to uh, void out all of their albumin and their protein and not holding on to any protein. Irritability and confusion will come from the increase, uh, the prolonged increase of the UN. The urea in the blood causes irritability and confusion. Um, headache and dizziness comes from prolonged uh, high blood pressure. Edema, especially periorbital and peripheral edema. Retinal findings can also come from um, increase in blood pressure. The pallor, pallor is directly related to concepts of anemia, which is related to ideas of erythropoietin. Um, not being effectively produced by the kidney, um, as well as uh, signs and symptoms of CHF and prolonged fluid volume overload. Labs, we're going to look at the specific gravity. Usually when patients have chronic glomerular nephritis, they're, um, they're not concentrating their urine, so the concentration of the urine will depend on what the specific gravity is. Uh, proteinuria, usually patients that have uh, CGN have large, large proteins, and so they, those are considered casts. Patients <coughs> with CGN will often have a GFR of less than 50, um, which comes along with ideas of hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, because your kidneys are not making the base, um, uh, anemia, because your kidneys are not making erythropoietin to manufacture red blood cells, hypoalbuminemia, if um, I'm leaking albumin out into my kid, out into my urine. I do not have it in my blood, and then decrease calcium and increase phosphorus. Because if I'm not uh, voiding correctly, I'm not filtering correctly. I'm not getting rid of the phosphorus and calcium and phosphorus have an inverse relationship. Diagnostic testing, chest X-ray. We're looking to see the size of the heart to identify uh, potentially cardiomegaly related to CHF. <clears throat> An EKG or ECG would be related to uh, hyperkalemia, and then the CT scan or the MRI will show the actual size of the kidney. Nursing management. We're going to take an antihypertensive here, usually a calcium channel blocker, helps increase the GFR. They may take some Lasix. Um, here patients are going to have decreased sodium and decreased fluid, but patients that have chronic glomerular nephritis, because this is a chronic disease state, we will have them eat protein. They will increase their protein from, from the acute stage 
to a no, more of a, a, a normal protein amount with chronic pulmonary nephritis. Um, because this is a chronic state, we can't have them decrease their protein forever or they won't have um, the ability to make new cells. However, um, when we increase the protein here, we want to increase the high biological value protein. So eggs, milk, cheese, beans, um, tofu, uh, soybeans, things that uh, are not flesh or not muscle. Uh, treat and prevent UTI so we don't have any further damage to the urinary tract and potentially hemodialysis. So now I talked before about the idea of hypotension. If you have a patient that has nephrotic syndrome and we're um, getting rid of all of our protein or albumin in our urine, then we don't have any protein or albumin in our blood. So if you look down the left side of where these arrows are, increased glomerular permeability leads to protein in the blood, I'm sorry, leads to protein in the urine and pro albumin in the urine, which leads to decreased hypoalbuminemia protein in the blood, decreased albuminemia, decreased albumin in the blood. When I mean, you don't have any albumin, albumin's the albumin's the essential element that makes all your vascular space, all your all your vessels strong. So albumin helps keep the fluid in. When your albumin is low, fluid is allowed to leak out of the vessel, so it decreases the oncotic pressure. Low albumin causes decreased oncotic pressure. So the fluid leaks out of the vessel. And then you have the fluids on the outside of the vessel, and what's on the inside of the vessel is hypovolemia. So if I have hypovolemia, or I don't have enough volume within my vessel, my all my natural mechanisms in my body are going to start to kick in because it says I you know, my blood pressure is not high enough. And your renin angiotensin aldosterone system activates, your antidiuretic hormone activates, and you start to retain salt and water. Well, that would be great if my vessel was strong enough to hold the salt and water. The problem is the vessel is not strong enough to hold the salt and water, and the salt and water go outside the vascular space, causing generalized edema and a low serum sodium level. Salt and water go together, sodium and water go together, and my fluid is outside the space, then my serum sodium is low. That's one thing that happens with nephrotic syndrome. The other thing that happens with nephrotic syndrome is when I have low albumin in my blood, albumin is manufactured and restored through your liver. <clears throat> so your liver then begins to synthesize everything. It can't just do one thing at a time. So it, it, it has excessive clotting factors, which puts your patient at higher risk for uh, renal thromboembolism, PEs, DVTs, stroke, etc., um, and then hyperlipidemia. The thing about increasing someone's lipids is once they're increased, you can't get rid of lipids. So they have uh, accelerated atherosclerosis. So this is called nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome can happen during acute glomerular nephritis or chronic glomerular nephritis. It's a change in disease state. It's like a complication of each of those diseases. And the hallmark sign is hypotension. These patients with AGN and CGN are supposed to have high blood pressure. They're not supposed to have low blood pressure. They're supposed to have high blood pressure because the kidneys aren't functioning correctly. So when you have a patient that presents with low blood pressure, it now tells you that they've had a change in the disease state. So their clinical manifestations, they're gonna have edema and the serum sodium is gonna be low. They're gonna have pallor. They're gonna have anorexia because they haven't been holding on to their albumin or their protein to make new cells, they're going to have weight loss. Hematuria or the foam of urine, the foam of urine actually indicates that there's protein in the urine and then malaise. Um, diagnostic testing, patient history, do they have any reason to have had acute glomerular nephritis or chronic glomerular nephritis? A urinalysis, do they have protein and blood in their urine? Albumin levels, what is, do they have hypoalbuminemia, do they have low albumin levels? Sodium and potassium. Remember, in nephrotic syndrome, your serum sodium is going to be low when potassium may be elevated. My BUN, my BUN, my creatinine are going to be elevated. The cholesterol is going to be elevated. And then the renal ultrasound and biopsy are usually done together. We're looking at the cellular function of the um, organ. Complications. Um, we can have infection. We can have the thromboembolism of the thromboembolism of the renal vein, the PE. We can have acute renal failure. 
you know, why we have a, could have acute renal failure or acute kidney injury. Because if the patient has periods of hypotension, that can lead to uh, pre-renal failure and then advanced atherosclerosis. So nursing management. The very first thing that we're going to do for these patients that have nephrotic syndrome due to low albumin is we're going to give them albumin. We're going to give them albumin so the vessel is strong and the fluid switches the space. So now my vessel is strong, my fluid switches, has switched the space, I have lots of fluid. Because remember, if you think back to the picture, during the time where I had that hypovolemia, my renin, aldosterone, angiotensin, and my ADH started to work, and so I retained all this salt and water. I've switched the fluid back to the right space. I still have all that water. So they're overloaded. So they're going to need diuretics. Um, we like small dose ACE inhibitors to help potentiate the function of the kidney. Um, lipid lowering agents. We're going to monitor for signs and symptoms of increased BUN. B B signs and symptoms of increased BUN um, are irritability, confusion, um, transient memory loss, etc. Um, hypotension and prevention of infection. A lot of times with the hypotension, we have to um, give multiple doses of the albumin so, um, so that the, um, the vessel stays strong because we can give one dose and go through all of these um, issues and then they end up dropping their albumin again and we have to kind of redo it over and over again. And then prevention of infection, especially urinary tract infections. Thank you.